morning, everyone, and thank you very much for joining me. This is the morning market review. It's Thursday, the 25th of May, 2023. My name is Russell Shaw. I'm a senior market specialist at FXM, and my email address is at fxm.com. Just want to go through our disclaimers. I'm going to bring up the uh, risk investment warning first. I'll keep this on screen for a few moments. All right, and here is our market commentaries disclaimer. And just finally, our references market scope 2.0 and tradingview.com. Uh, just a few things um, I think are worth mentioning. Um, so just taking a look at um, the Bloomberg email, five things to start your day. I think there's some, um, stories we need to be aware of. The first is that Fitch, Fitch ratings has uh, effectively warned the US, US's uh, AAA ratings under threat, and that's from that uh, political uh, standoff in terms of the debt ceiling negotiation. So uh, that, that's pretty serious. Uh, keep, let's keep a, uh, an eye on that. Uh, the next thing I want to uh, just talk about is um, NVIDIA. NVIDIA re um, released its results overnight. And the uh, email just says, uh, the results show that customers are binging on chips used for artificial intelligence. So there's an AR frenzy. So um, NVIDIA is, uh, let's go through to TradingView. I'm just going to bring up the NVIDIA chart. I want to show you guys uh, just an interesting way that you can try and pick up trends. We have looked at it before, but I think that it's just worth uh, mentioning again. Uh, hey, Howard, morning to you. Welcome, as always. Uh, thank you, everyone, for, for joining. All right, so what I've done here with NVIDIA is I've actually based, this is year to date, I've based it at 100. So we're starting off at 100, and you can see we're at 213 spot 33. So in other words, we've more than doubled on NVIDIA for uh, 2023, uh, which is quite incredible. And um, if we just zoom out here, uh, let me make sure it's on logarithmic. Okay, we can start doing some work on um, finding trends. And one of the ways that we can do that is by using uh, trend following indicators. What's a trend following indicator? Just a moving average. Just a moving average. So um, I'm going to change this to the weekly. And uh, what we can do is we can put in three moving averages. So we want to put in three moving averages. It's a, a triple moving average system, which I just want to share with you guys. And um, again, uh, just take this uh, as education. It's something that needs to be tested. You have to find the right settings, etc. Um, I do know there was a, um, a legendary trader coming out of Oz by the name of Dawn Bolton Smith. She used to use a triple moving average system, and she used to use five, ten, and uh, fifteen, I believe. Uh, five, ten, fifteen. I believe it could be 5, 10, 30. I just need to uh, double check that. I beg your pardon. But we, we'll just use a 5, 10, and 15 here. And um, uh, we'll make them uh, exponential moving averages. So just go through to your indicators and add uh, exponential moving average. One, two, three. Okay, so we've got three moving averages. And then we're going to adjust the settings. We'll make it a 5. Uh, let's make this one green. Uh, the next one, let's make this 10. I'll make it orange. And uh, the last one. Let's make it 15. I just change it to red. Uh, 
And what you can do is you can use the triple moving average um, effect. This is a 30. Okay, we'll make it a 30. All right, so effectively, what you do with a triple moving average is you uh, use the intermediate, the intermediate and the longer term for entries. So here it would be the orange interacting with the red. So we can put in a um, we can put in a little circle here. I think everybody can see that's where the interaction is, right? And that effectively puts one into a long. Uh, but you use the shorter term and the intermediate for your exits. So what we could do is let's move this to over here. So let's just say somebody was looking to short NVIDIA way back in April 2022. They would wait for the intermediate to death cross below the long. So orange moves below the red. Uh, let's take this out. I'm going to use an ellipse. Um, I prefer the ellipse. Yeah, okay. There we go. So you can see the orange is moving below the the red over here that effectively signals the short okay but then you use the green and the orange to exit so your first exit would be over here it's a whipsaw signal but then you would go short again over there right so it's keeping the red is you you're using the red as a filter to keep you on the short side and you're using the using the green and the orange to effectively line up bearishly to, uh, to try and find those shorts. And then of course, the next exit is over here. Okay, so typically what happens with moving average systems is if you take out, if you take out the red, if you take out the red, effectively you are almost constantly moving between um, you're almost constantly moving between uh, long and short positions. So this would be a this would be a short position. This would be a long position, but it would be a, a poor long position. Then you would move back into short, then you would move back into long, then you would move into long. So with a, a single moving average or with a dual moving average, you are constantly in the market and you're alternating between long and shorts, long and shorts. When you add the triple moving average system, that third mo moving average adds as a filter. You're not constantly in the market. Um, does that make sense? I hope I'm explaining myself uh, uh, adequately. Because of the third moving average system, the third moving average, and because we're using the third moving average as the entry with the second, um, we're effectively not constantly in the market. What we're effectively doing is we're using it as a filter and we'll stay short as long as we are below the long, okay? We'll start going, we'll start going long as long as we're above the longer term moving average. So you could see if someone was uh, lucky enough to get into NVIDIA, you would have got a terrific, terrific signal way back in uh, January of this year and you would still be long okay you'd still be long now i want to take this and have a look at this in terms of the um of the nasdaq because the nasdaq we know is overbought right let's just go through to nasdaq now nasdaq has jumped overnight because of the nvidia results but there's still uh there's still uh, um i think a um discussion to be had around these moving average systems. Let me just see a comment here. Kobus has actually been using this method, but always using the same EMAs for entry and exit. Okay, so uh, yeah, Kobus, uh, let me know, um, how, test this and let me know how you, um, let me know what you are uh, finding with it. Uh, how it's asking what periods, uh, Howard, the moving average periods, I'm hesitant to say these are, are fixed, okay? Um, really, there's different ways that you could use it. I'm using a 5, uh, 10, and 30 here. Um, in fact, 
we can make it a far 15 and, and 30. The, the, the point is, okay, the point is that there's not one size that's going to be a magic number. Um, there has to be some solid testing around this. I think that um, uh, Dawn's uh, Bolton Smith used, I need to double check. I'll, t I'll, t I'll tell you guys tomorrow, um, absolutely, if she used a 5, uh, 10 30 or a far 15 30. I've got a feeling it's a far 15 30 now that I think on it, but just um, so the, the five basically um, is uh, um, you, you can adjust it for also uh, specific periods. If you go through to the daily, take a look at this, Howard. If you use the green, okay, you've got the five day. The five day is basically your weekly cycle. You can change the orange to a, a 21 day. Why 21 day? Because there's effectively 21 days, 21 trading days in a month. So now you've got the um, the weekly the weekly five day cycle against the uh, monthly 21 day cycle, and you can actually change the longer one, believe it or not, to a 63 day because that's your quarterly reporting. Okay, that's your quarterly reporting. So and then you can start looking at your interactions between your weekly five your monthly 21 and your quarterly 63 and you can see that uh, on the daily chart the, the signals here aren't too badly on the nasdaq um howard's just saying oliver velez uses the 20 and 200 period um, um i i have heard of uh oliver velez i think um if i'm correct he's a systems trader he does a lot of systems testing is that right howard just uh, correct me if i'm wrong there um, so he's probably tested a lot of moving average uh, lengths. Um, but the idea here is um, you can use um, different uh, theories to try and kind of find your, yes, but he's traded about 40 odd years. Okay, cool. Um, you, can have, you can use Fibonacci's. You can use 513.34, okay? 513, those are, th those are, Fib levels, uh, 513, 34. What kind of uh, interaction does the uh, the Fib levels give? Okay, so uh, that's another way that you can start looking at this. Um, what I'd like to do, uh, just to kind of round this off, because um, to be honest, I'm, I'm not sure we're treating this with the time that it deserves, but what we have on the NASDAQ, Let's just go through to NASDAQ 100 here. Is an overbought condition, okay? We've got this overbought condition on the on the NASDAQ. So it actually looks like it's moderated somewhat. I just want to uh, keep an eye on that. But it, it's really, it's at 80. Um, I'm expecting that at some stage this uh, RSI has to normalize. We can see that there is some uh, risk out there with Fitch now putting the triple uh, A rating on watch. Um, the fact of the matter is this debt ceiling, um, the longer it remains um, um, in limbo, so to speak, the, the worse it's going to be for the markets. What you can do is you can go down to the um, triple moving average system and um, take a look at it on a daily chart and just see here when we get a dead cross. If we get a dead cross here, that kind of ends the uh, ends the, um, the upper trend on the daily. The weekly chart is uh, generally going to be used more for position trading. So positions is you, you're holding for the long term. So that's what a, a weekly chart. When you find a good trend on a weekly chart, you can hold you can hold some really good positions, assuming okay, assuming the trend is um, a really good trend. Let's go through to that Nvidia trend, which is um, we know it's up over 100% for 2023. It's such a terrific trend in that. You go long and you'd still be holding. You'd still be holding. And if there's any sort of uh, pullback here, as long as the moving averages remain in bullish mode, you know, you don't get shaken out. So you use it as a positional trading system, potentially to keep uh, to keep in with the uh, with the 
uh, longer term trend. Let's take a look here at Euro, okay? Uh, let's just take a look at Euro on MarketScope. I took a look at Euro this morning. It's a very interesting, it's a very interesting um, chart. Yeah, it uses a trailing stop, exactly. Uh, it's, it's effectively a, a, a trailing stop um, inside the system. Um, quite correct, Howard. Take a look what's happening here on the Euro. This is now turning into quite a tricky chart because what we've got to be looking at is, um, is this the next higher trough? Question mark. I don't know how this is going to map out. And if it's the next higher trough, do we get a lower peak? And if we get a lower peak, all of a sudden the trend changes in Euro. Um, there was news out this morning that uh, Germany is in technical recession. I'm going to see if, the, uh, if, if Nick's covering that. Um, I'll put it on the Telegram channel. Otherwise, um, I'll do an article on it. Uh, Howard, you are absolutely spot on here. He says this could uh, turn out to be a head and shoulders. Okay, he has the left shoulder, there's the head, there's the right shoulder. It could be, assuming that there's that trend change, but we don't know, we don't know. So what we can do is we can keep an eye on the triple moving average, right? So let's go, let's go back here. And let's change this to the euro US dollar. And this is very interesting now. Take a look what's happening. Okay. We've got a potential dead cross here. See that? So the long would have been given over here. And now it's saying, well, hang on a second. There is potentially some trouble on the horizon. That actually makes sense because we've been looking at the US dollar and we've been looking at the US uh, yields. Those yields are no longer uh, sort of, um, they're no longer sort of dovish sentiment. They've moved back into hawkish sentiment and that seems to be um, reflecting in dollar strength. Well, take a look what's happening here on the euro US dollar. We're getting that, we're getting that dead cross. Isn't that interesting? So, um, something to perhaps add to your um, toolbox. Um, it it can't be used out of the box. This needs proper testing around it. Everyone's got a different um, uh, trading uh, psychology threshold, something that they're comfortable with. You can use it in shorter term trading as well. Um, I'll come back to you with uh, Dawn's uh, settings tomorrow, just to let you know. I don't want to um, misrepresent them. Um, I have got them written down and it's for some odd reasons just uh, uh, I, I can't remember them at the moment. All right. Um, are there any questions or comments around what we've done this morning? Just go ahead and um, type those in. Any questions or comments about what we've done is just something a little bit different. I wanted to just to show you this three, uh, this triple moving average system. We have, we have seen it before, um, but I think with the way that the euro is behaving, it really sort of adds a dimension to the analysis. All right, um, nothing coming through. So let's wrap up here, guys. Uh, I wanna wish everyone a very good day ahead, a very good evening ahead, and we shall talk uh, tomorrow morning and um, I'll come up with those um, settings for you. All right, thank you very much, guys. Uh, speak to you tomorrow.